Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Customer Connect series. I'm Raj Narsimhan, SVP and GM of our Compute and Networking Business Unit at Micron. And I have a very special guest with me here today, Scott Tees, who is the VP and GM of Lenovo's HPC and AI Solutions Group. Thank you for joining us today, Scott. Hey, Raj, it's great to be with you, man. Thanks for spending the time with us today. I appreciate uh, it. Absolutely. And we're here today to discuss trends in HPC and AI that drive the need for innovative solutions to deliver much needed memory bandwidth and capacity and help solve problems for our partners like Lenovo. So Scott, welcome again to our Customer Connect series. And again, thank you and the Lenovo team for the excellent, wonderful partnership that you had over so many years that's helping both of us solve really tough problems out in the industry. Yeah, absolutely, right. You know, the, the days where you could just plug any component into a server and it just worked, they're long gone. So, you know, close partnerships with like with Micron and our other partners is the key to, to building like a, a system that works together. So thank you for your partnership. And we're doing you're doing some amazing things. We're really happy to be uh, including them in, in our in our roadmap. Some thanks, Scott. So let's just get into it. You know, as everybody knows, generative AI, even including my mother, she brings up GAI to me. And I'm like, mom, how do you know this stuff? <laughs> everybody knows about GAI. It's mm -hmm. scaling exponentially across all applications, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on-prem, it's a mix, it's on the edge, it's in PCs, it's in mobile devices. I mean, it's taken over taken over every application. And one of the key things that it drives more need for computing and it more needs more needs for memory. So we've been observing that it's the, the higher bandwidth, if you can go provide that, not just higher capacity, there's also a lot of positives that can come out of it. And we're pretty excited today to talk about a specific new product, uh, the MRDIM, that we believe can help address some of these challenges. And there's a couple of things from Micron's point of view. You know, we know that, uh, that the bandwidth per gigabyte seems to be a more and more relevant metric to go talk about. And there's, you know, there's so much potential for AI to be able to go solve all sorts of problems in the world, you know, medical related issues, weather related issues, food related issues, that, that the applications are just, I don't even think we can think about what all the different applications can be and will be through time, but it is driving the need for supporting larger and larger AI models and, and to, to go be able to go solve these complex problems. So <clears throat> we have that. And even if you think about from a CPU standpoint, big role in inference, right? Training is, is a large part and inference will continue to grow. And I think we both believe that over time, inference will actually exceed the amount of training, right? the usage uh, from a usage standpoint. And there's, there's different cases, use cases. There's one called RAG, which I learned about not that long ago, retrieval augmented generation, right. which requires long, large memory footprint. So you have to store a lot of data and then you got to go load in a whole bunch of information and then be able to go add, pull the data out from an inference standpoint. So it feels like having an ability to not just have high capacity, but also high bandwidth is a really important to his industry. So Scott, I would we would love to hear what Lenovo thinks about it and what you think about it. Yeah, so you know, the, the industry are, you know, our partners over at, at Intel and AMD, they've done a great job of giving us more CPU cores over the past years. In fact, you know, I remember just a few years ago, it was a big deal when we went from one to two to four to eight. You know, <laughs> now we've got hundreds of cores in a single system. Um, Micron's done a great job of giving us larger capacity DIMMs in the past, you know, building these large 128 gig DIMMs out of smaller building blocks, making them more affordable, making them run more energy efficient. Uh, but one of the areas that we were still suffering with was memory bandwidth. We were, you know, customers are hungry, whether you're, you know, whether you're doing a traditional HPC workload like, uh, you know, computer fluid dynamics or electronic design or weather forecasting, these things not only need lots of cores, but they also need lots of memory bandwidth in the industry wasn't you know providing like a balance between core count um, capacity and bandwidth. Well, now with these new MR DIMs that you're you're releasing here, they are they're you know helping us keep up with the with the growth of the number of cores in these systems. Lots of customers are really happy about that. Are really happy about that, and we are too. Um, we're thrilled to see uh, you know this new technology come out, knowing that kind of we're at the very beginning of what MR technology MR DIM technology is going to do for us over the coming years. So it's going to help AI workloads, whether it's inference or even, you know, retraining of models. It's going to help traditional high-performance computing workloads um, in a way that we haven't seen before. 
You know, these systems are a set size. We can only pack so many DIMMs into the system before we run out of room inside of the real estate inside that server. So having this technology that allows to basically put two ranks on one DIMM slot is a huge win uh, for customers. So exciting, setting times. Awesome, super insightful, Scott. Thank you for that. And it's good to see the that you know how much overlap there is between your views and our views. And I would expect no less, right? Given how closely the two of us collaborate, we should be super well aligned. It's nice to see that actually in action. Um, and you know that's for us from an emergent perspective. One of the things I like about it, and I've talked about it internally with the teams too, is when you come up with some, some new technology. If the lift at the customer side is high, then it takes a while for it to get out, but the value prop has to just be super solid. Yeah. MRDIM, on the other hand, is like a plug and play, right? You, you pull out an RDIM, you slap it an MRDIM, and you're instantly getting 30, 40% higher bandwidth. So that's that's pretty compelling. And the lift on, on customers like yourself, the end, it feels like it's a relatively low lift. So it should, we think, right? And I'm hopeful that uh, it, you and your end customers in the same way, it should enable a faster adoption, more seamless adoption, let's put it that way. Uh, for MRDM technologies, and uh, so that, that that so that feels like something that will make a lot of sense, and uh, and we'd love to hear how whether you agree with that thought process. How are you think your team thinking about it, and what do you think the end customer acceptance will look like? Oh yeah, Raj. So when you you know when you you're in technology and you hear about advances like what you're delivering here with these MRDMs, the first thing you think is that it's going to be a complete tear up of what I've been doing all along to take advantage of it. This is this is big time improvements in memory bandwidth. So to do it, customers would jump through a lot of hoops to be able to do it. But what's beautiful about this is these DIMMs are going to fit in the exact same slots and the exact same servers as what we were planning just for your traditional DDR5 DIMMs. So the fact that we worked together to make sure that the systems were optimized for Micron DDR5 memory means that then these next-gen systems are also optimized for MR DIMM as well. It makes it really easy for customers to take advantage of it. That is that, That's a beautiful you know, factor in, in how quickly I think adoption of this technology is going to go. Awesome. Good to hear. Scott, I want to maybe pivot to something slightly different related is, you know, we had the opportunity at uh, one of the conferences not that long ago to sort of visit your lab that you guys had set up over there and see the advances that Lenovo has made in liquid cooling. I mean, that's just impressive. You guys, you know, it feels like you're leading the industry in, in that area and you're, you're getting out products that can really help improve computing power through liquid cooling. And this is water, right? It's, it's nothing water, you know, yeah. fancy liquid, it's water. And, uh, and so, you know, given how important we all know power thermal management are in data centers, and really, you know, in some cases you even hear about power being the limiting factor for how many data sets you can build in a region and people looking at different regions for that, this sort of liquid innovative solution liquid cooling feels like it could you know, extend the life uh, further, improve computing further right now. So could you, you know, and what we're trying to go do is to, from our perspective, even though memory plays only a relatively smaller portion of the power, every every bit of uh, picojoule is going to make a difference. So we're trying to go say, hey, even at the higher bandwidth, we will keep the power below a certain envelope. And then even as we double the bandwidth or go even higher, we want to try and target the same power for our products. But maybe you could talk a little bit about the innovation Lenovo is doing on liquid cooling and how you think this power uh, requirements become such a critical part going forward. Yeah, no, it, that's a great topic. Um, yeah, so, you know, if we if I step back just a few years and I look at what limited customers the most, most I bet you people would tell you it was probably core count. Um, now that we've got hundreds of cores on a, on a server, it's other things that are limiting our clients. In many cases, it's memory bandwidth. We've talked about, we got a great solution for that. In other cases, it's the amount of power that they have available to them or the power they have in the data center itself. And that's where liquid cooling really excels. What we're able to do with liquid cooling with our, our, our Lenovo Neptune is help transfer more of the energy that would have been used for air conditioning, for air handlers, for fans, move that back into the IT itself, which means customers can unlock more performance. And really in the end, that's, that's what it's all about is take what's limiting you the most. And for many clients, it's again, it's power. Um, and let's make the most of that. And that's exactly what Neptune is focused on doing. Um, you know, my hat's off to, to my crown for the work you did. As we moved from DDR4 to DDR5, we saw really nice bandwidth improvements at lower power consumption per gigabyte than we saw before. And we expect to see the same kind of energy efficient performance benefits um, as we move with, into the next gen with these MR DIMMs. So really exciting. 
Um, if you haven't seen Lenovo Neptune, I'd love for you to take a look. Our goal with Neptune is to cool as close to 100% of the of the entire workload as we possibly can. I want to be able to run a supercomputer or an AI system with no additional specialized air conditioning at all. I want to be able to run it right here in the room that I'm sitting in right now. And, and our liquid cooling uh, Neptune solutions are able to do that today. So it's exciting. Uh, it's super exciting. Hey, Scott, you know, I, I don't want to keep you longer. This has been a super fun and informative conversation. I hope the viewers uh, also feel the same way. I, I, I think the partnership between our two companies has has been fantastic, never been better. You can even state that boldly. And we continue to work well together uh, and innovate solutions that are just gonna help, help, help the industry. So thank you for the time and look forward to continuing our partnership and growing together. Yeah, Raj, thank you. Thank you for the partnership. And again, it's the closeness that we're operating together that's allowing us to unlock these amazing technologies for our customers and make and do it in a way that's easy for them to adopt. So thank you for, for the partnership from, uh, from us as well. Thank you.